Parent-teacher conferences are one of the most important meetings I have with families throughout the year. But what happens in August for parent-teacher conferences is definitely not what's happening at the end of the year. At the beginning of the year, parent-teacher conferences really revol revolve around relationship building and understanding each family's story a little bit more. So I ask a lot of probing questions just to understand um, what it is that they enjoy doing, their child enjoys doing. During this conference, I also share a little bit about myself. I let them know things that they might not already know about me, just to let them know that I'm willing to open myself up um, and create a real relationship with them. Um, during this conference, I also start probing about what their hopes and dreams um, and aspirations for their child is, because these are the things that I want to start including in the curriculum and thinking about ways that I can tie each of these hopes and dreams to one of our developmental goals that we have for our children. So at the next conference, I start to piece out their, each child's student data to figure out what their strengths are and what areas they need work on. And I, as I look through that data and look at the specific skills, I put together a report for the families that let them know what, where their child is currently performing, as well as some suggested activities to help move them forward. And a lot of times when people say, you know, give this a try, they don't actually give you the materials to do it. So then the obligation is up to you to actually find materials and resources and start performing the activity with your child. Well, that's usually when people don't end up doing the activities. It's because they don't have the resources to do them. So I make sure that each child has a packet of materials, the actual materials they would need to perform the activities that I'm suggesting. So for example, if I'm suggesting play a card game with a child so that way they can work on uh, identifying numerals, that they actually have the deck of cards and a set of numerals that they can start connecting these things to. So does it take a lot of time and money to put these packets together for each child? Honestly, it does take a good amount of time but again, it takes time to save time. You know parent-teacher conferences are coming up. So the first thing I do is I start a month ahead of time. I have 16 children for 16 days, for 10 minutes each of those days, I start putting these packets together. So it never really feels like a whole lot of effort. And by the end of the month, I am ready to go and I know exactly what I'm talking about with each family. Um, as far as money is concerned, one activity I sent home to a child named Eno was uh, inspired by a handwriting without tears activity where they write on a little mini chalkboard using a piece of chalk um, their name and then they use a sponge to erase the letter and they keep practicing this. This is to help build fine motor skills and also letter recognition. And for Eno, and I knew this was going to be a perfect way for Eno to learn. Um, was this expensive? Well, thankfully, chalk is something that they provide, DC Public Schools provides to me, so I'm happy to break the chalk up into pieces and provide that to my students. The mini chalkboards I got at the dollar store, um, so it was a buck. And the little sponge, I used sponges to clean the tables in the classroom, and I didn't give him a dirty sponge, I gave him a clean sponge, but I was able to cut off just a little nub for him and put that into a packet along with instructions for the activity so his parents could do it at home with him as well. And so the whole cost of this was a dollar and 10 minutes, and it really was worth every cent and every minute. So at the end of the year, I sit down with each family and we discuss the progress that each child made. We really tease apart the data, so they're not just looking at a snapshot of a semester, but we're looking at the whole year. And we look at the areas that they made tremendous growth, where they went from performing at a, an infant toddler twos level to a kindergarten level, and family members are blown away. And we look at areas that a child may have stayed stagnant, for whatever reason, developmentally, or perhaps that's an area we need to push them as we move forward, or perhaps that's an area that we need specific activities for, for the summer, to prepare them for pre-K. But it's real, this dialogue is really important because it gives families that whole bird's eye view of the year for, of the child. I'm able to have this conversation with the families, not just because of the investment that I made in to each child, but because of the partnership that we had together from day one, that we can kind of stand back together with the child and celebrate their progress. Because had we not done this together, they wouldn't have had the gains that they have.